congratulations on Toy Story 4. Thank you. It was Thank amazing. You. I was particularly impressed with how seamless it was a transition from Toy Story 3, despite it being like a decade. How did you guys hit on the perfect story and theme to continue? Well, it, you know, it was, that's kind of the thing that got me excited about this movie is like, well, what is, what would be after Toy Story 3? Like he isn't, Woody's in a new bedroom with a new kid, with new toys. It's, it's almost like two companies merging in a way. Mm -hmm. And so the, the dynamic is going to be completely different from what we've seen before. So already I was like, okay, this is, there's something here that's different than what, than any of the other Toy Story films. And we just kept building on that. Like, well, what if Woody's not the favorite toy? He can't be with Andy or he can't be with Bonnie because he already was with Andy. It wouldn't feel wouldn't feel right or, or you know, it just feel forced if it was like that. So Bo Peep's also such a big part of this. We wanted to kind of start the movie off with a bang mm -hmm. and remind you of the Woody and Bo relationship. Right? Yeah. We haven't seen her in a long time. She hasn't really been in the movie since Toy Story 2, which is like almost 20, 20 years ago. Yeah. And so we wanted to draw you in, remind you of that connection and then and where and then kind of answer the question of where she went, and where she's been. I mean, speaking of Bo Peep, I was harboring resentment because I loved her so much and then she was taken yeah. from oh, me. Oh yeah, you so were one. Was, we brought her exactly. back Exactly, how did you guys think to do that? Like what made you make that leap from taking her away out of Toy Story 3 mm. and then making her such a central part? You know, it's funny, I didn't realize there was so much love for Bo Peep. I've always loved Bo Peep, but I remember um, at when three happened, they're like, "Where's Bo? <laughs> what happened?" People were like so angry. <laughs> it's true. So it was really, it was just you. <laughs> it was really cool to to be able to bring her back. And um, I don't remember the exact. I, there was just so many toys mm -hmm. in Andy's room, and I think part of the. Re I wasn't on the story team for three, but I remember the thought was like, we need to kind of pare it down to mm -hmm. to just those, those core ones that are from the you know part of that group of Andy's toys to kind of hand over. So. It was kind of like a blessing in disguise to be able to bring her back mm -hmm. in this big way. Yeah. Of those core toys, uh, or any of the toys really, who would be your Woody? Like who's your best friend that you'd want to take with you everywhere? From, from the toys in yeah, Toy, in Toy Story. Story. The, the classic Story. toy um, in Toy Story 4. Yeah. I, I love Slinky Dog. I know he's under he's underrated, um, he but he's, he's consistent, he's funny, he's lovely, he helps out the friend toys when they're in need. I just love Slinky. He'd be my guy. I'll have to say from Toy Story 4, it's Benson, the ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say it is because I actually, the reason he's in the movie, I had a ventriloquist dummy growing up that I loved. And uh, uh, what was his name? Willie Talk. Willie Talk. <laughs> it's a pun. <laughs> Get it? Um, I just got just it. Just got it. Yeah. <laughs> you said it was a pun. And uh, so I have a very close connection with Benson. Oh, wow. People tend to fear him, but. He, I think that I would use him to fend off Chucky, for example, is what I think would happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm glad with, of that. Now, I heard that um, the toys, the development of the toys, like with Mattel, was also sometimes happening in conjunction with the story development. How, what kind of conversations did you guys have back and forth? Yeah, you know, so we meet with, with Mattel early on uh, to talk about what the new characters are. It, it's kind of a long process to develop the toys and to make sure you're getting them right. And so we were doing information sharing kind of throughout the whole process. And as things change in the story and as characters come and go, we needed to very quickly communicate that to Mattel because there's a fair amount of lead time to get those things ready to come out at the right at the right time. So. And we also met with them just about creating our characters in the, for the computer, for the movie. Um, for example, Bo Peep has a new outfit, or even Gabby Gabby, you know, just mm -hmm. because she's a brand new doll, we needed to know like what dolls from that era actually the materials are made of and like how the dress would be, because we're gonna be getting so close, we wanted to look correct. Right. And mm -hmm. so uh, we would meet with them just on how toys are even made so that oh. we can put that into the movie.